It is my video on where, what happened to LD? What happened yesterday? At the beginning of yesterday's video, I assumed there were two possible outcomes. LD was either in the box alive or in the box dead. I figured he was in the box dead because I had seen Hansi going up to her den, putting leaves in it to insulate it, which is a good move because it's really freaking cold right now. I think we're down here freezing because I saw some frost on the roof. So that's what I thought. One or the other is going to happen. I'm either going to find an alive squirrel in this box or an not alive squirrel in this box in, in the cabin. I was afraid to stick my hand in there when he didn't come out. I was like, oh my God, when he didn't fall out, I thought, okay, I'm going to have to stick my hand in there and grab the dead body of an animal I love. So now I have the same conclusions. He's either alive or he's dead. I figured if she took him out of there, then he must be alive. And I keep looking that way because squirrels are running in and out. Come here, white tip. Come here, white tip. There you go. Okay. I've, I was pretty happy yesterday after the video because, I, for one, I was relieved that I did not have to grab a squirrel that I love in rigor mortis form and take him out of a cabin from that high up on a ladder because I've handled dead squirrels before. But, uh... I didn't know how I'd do on a ladder trying to keep my cool and um my then so I and then when he wasn't in there I thought okay good Hansi took him she's he's must be fine otherwise she wouldn't take him out and that you know she somehow dragged him up the tree with her and got him into her den that's what I thought or put him in another cabin but that seems less likely for sure because getting him out of that maze was in, seems difficult enough and impossible enough. I don't know how she'd cram him back into another box with him in the condition he was in. So I thought maybe she pulled him up, got him into the den up higher on the tree. Um, but then John Ernest of Critter Alley wrote that he's probably dead. And I thought, and that she took him out of there to avoid other animals being attracted to go in there for the smell or, um, you know, for disease reasons. And I'm like, crap, I hadn't thought of that. That makes sense too. But the thing about that one, I'm not seeing him anywhere. I'm outside all the time, other than when I'm doing these videos <laughs> and working. But, um, but even when I'm working, I'm going outside constantly, you know, checking like between meetings, between stuff I got to work on. I walk around, I check on everybody. So it feels like I would have run across him. But then again, he was hard to find that Last, that day when he was out just hanging in the woods, just on the ground of the woods, he was hard to find, even when I knew where he was, the area where he was. When I knew the area where he was, I had a hard time finding him. It was just a lump of gray fur. So it is possible, I think, that that she took him somewhere yesterday um, out in the woods and I wouldn't have seen him because I wasn't like combing and anyway, it's a huge issue. Now, now I'm thinking maybe he is dead. I was kind of euphoric yesterday, thinking, okay, he must be alive, and she took him out. But now I'm thinking, okay, he, like John said, he could be dead, and she took him out for that reason. It just seems like it would have taken her so long to get him out that I would have seen that, because I work right by there. And it just seems like it would have taken her so long that I would have seen it. I don't feel like I'm ever going to see him again. I can't believe he lived as long as he did in the condition he was in. And it looked excruciating. So I hope wherever he is, he's good. I have watched. One thing that helps me with these squirrels, <laughs> there's um, YouTube channels on NDE, Near Death Experience, people who supposedly die and come back. Some of them, their stories you can look right at it and go, okay, you just contradicted yourself. So I really, I don't know about your story, but some of them seem pretty credible. There was like a fireman I saw who, um, he had a very credible story and, and like he seemed believable and he didn't contradict himself. Um, there was just this one girl and anyway, she said she died of a drug overdose. So it's like, if you die of a drug overdose and you think you go, who knows what goes through their mind. <laughs> so, she might have thought she had a near-death experience, who knows. But um, he said there were animals there. So, good, good. I want LD, and I told him, wait for us all. I told him before he died, wait for us all over there. Or 
I mean, he's free to come back. If baby Ur came back, it's too much, and I still seems that way. <laughs> or at least part of his spirit, maybe. Well, then maybe LD can go back, and I'll know. I'll know when LD comes back because he'll jump up on this leg, and he'll hang from his back legs. Two good back legs. When did I turn into such a mush kind of girl? You want to come up? Did you turn me into a mush? Did you turn me into a mush? There you go. Here you go. Oh, you got one. <laughs> All right. Happy Saturday. We're here now. That's the thing. We've all lost relatives. Probably all lost pets. We're here now. This place might be weird, but we signed up for it, I think. Or we were sentenced to it. But either way, <laughs> enjoy your Saturday. Let's do this thing. And because this is Squirrel Station, we're going to end with Grady, who's alive, well, and wants a nut. There we go. All right, you're a favorite. You're our little favorite. I think it's that big orange tail. Come here, buddy. Thanks.